Hello everyone, Daniel Yuck here. Thank you all for tuning in today, I appreciate you. Today I'm gonna go ahead and dive in and try to shed as much light as I possibly can on my logic, thought process, and approach upon picking tattoo needles for the specific design at hand. For me personally, I do feel this is one very important aspect that is often overlooked. And I do feel that if we went the extra mile to kind of switch out the needle configurations for every individual line that needed the appropriate size lined for that, it'll make for a better read within the tattoo. I'm going to go ahead and get, and I'm gonna get into that, prove my point here on what I'm trying to say upon actually showing you all this tattoo right here. Allow me to go ahead and just show you all what we're working with and just kind of touch base on that real quick before we actually dive into the approach here. Now for this, I'm going to be using the CNC P6 tattoo machine. It is a brand new tattoo machine by CNC. I'm going to be using the Dragonhawk Halo Power Supply, as you can see right here. Um, and I'm going to be using a, an assortment here of different needles. And I want an assortment so that way I can best illustrate the points that I'm trying to make and get the points across to you all with ease. Also, we're going to be doing the tattoo on this slab of real skin right here i will leave links in the description below for you so you can go ahead and check out all of this gear on your end i've also done reviews on all of this i'm also going to have the dragon hawk mass tattoo rotary machine right here and i'm also going to have the cnc x1 available at hand as well should i go ahead and choose to use those throughout this session for now though i'm going to go ahead and stick to the needle aspect and i'm going to go ahead and just try to touch base on as much as I can on why I pick the needles that I do and I'm going to just give you all the logic behind it. So let's dive into that aspect. So when I'm looking at a design, first and foremost, when I decide to take on a tattoo, I'm making sure that the design and what they're asking for is within my capabilities. I'm making sure that I can do what they're asking for and also try to, um, you know, exceed their expectations is always my goal. I want to do nice, clean work on each and every person that I do or every tattoo that I do. So therefore, I would never bite off a design that I wouldn't know how to do or accomplish on a tattoo. So with that being said, typically I'm always going for nice. As you can see, this is going to be a heavy line tattoo. I don't really go for um, realism or hyper realism or, you know, um, stuff like that. That's not in my, I guess, uh, cup of tea it's not what i prefer to do tattoo wise as i progress i may go ahead and go down that road but for now i prefer to go ahead and have like real nice dense line tattoos with like soft shading and dot work as you can see right here like mandalas micro tattoos um that's beyond this though but as you can see this stencil right here is mostly lines right here now as you can see though let me actually zoom in up close now, a good point right here, as you see, so on the wings, as you can see, the line is bigger right here. However, it goes to a smaller line right here. Now, during the tattoo process, I'm sure a lot of us would be tempted to just kind of use the same needle all the way through just for, you know, whatever sake. However, if we stick to the guns there and we change out the needles accordingly, and we figure out a different route to go ahead and input the ink, and which I will also show you here in this video, then I also feel it's going to make for a better read of the tattoo. So basically, if we could line this entire tattoo getting close to the configurations that are already here, so as you can see, like up here, there is thin lines right here, as you can see. So if we can kind of match these with the appropriate configuration without going too outside the bounds of these lines right here, I feel, again, it's going to make for a better read in the tattoo. And in my opinion, a better read in the tattoo makes for better quality work. So th again, this is just my thought process and logic and approach. This isn't necessarily, I'm, try I'm not trying to say that this is the ultimate way or the right way to do it. This is just my thought process upon pulling the lines. Now, with that being said, where I would typically begin is I'm going to work my way up from the bottom up to the tattoo. So one of the first things that does come my way is this stem and this wing right here. Right off the bat, I know on this outer edge of this wing right here and around the bird edge right there, I want that to be an 11 round liner. So I'm going to grab that. I do have a CNC standard 11 round liner right here. And in terms of using standard double zero or bug pin, that is completely personal preference i mean i don't really feel like there's a right or wrong that's just however you want to approach it now 
I'm thinking a 11 round liner or also what would work is a nine round shader as well. It may be a little bit more thicker, but a nine round shader could possibly get the job done. But for this, I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that 11 round liner. I'm gonna go ahead and just pull these lines right here with that. These inner lines right here, I'm gonna go ahead and use a double zero five round liner to go ahead and pull these smaller lines in here. All of the little details like uh, between here, uh, the separations for the feathers here, all of the little lines in between, even up here on the roses, that may also be a five round liner. So off the bat, majority of this tattoo is looking so along the lines of an 11 round liner, possibly a nine round liner here or there, um, and a five round liner. And then I'm gonna use a three round liner to shade. So just to reiterate, I'm gonna use the 11 round liner for the thicker lines that you see right here, all the way around the wings. I'm going to use the five round liner for all of the thinner lines in here, all of these right here as well. And we're going to go ahead and get into that. And for this, I may like the stem right here. I may use a seven round liner for these right here for the little stems right there. So I think that's good out here too. That's going to be with a three round liner and these little guys out here. So you can kind of see why, because the new configurations kind of match the design at hand. So when I'm making the stencil, I'm very mindful of the needles that I'm gonna want to use, or I'm kind of anticipating the needles that I'm gonna use while making the stencil. So this runs way back, like I'm making the stencil and knowing if the design is you know, achievable by you is a big part of knowing what needles that you're going to use. Because if you don't know how you're going to achieve the design, then you're probably gonna just wing it the entire way, which is not something that I would recommend doing. Now, with this being said, let's go ahead and get into the tattooing process. I'm gonna go ahead and just load up the 11 round liner here. So that way we can go ahead and begin pulling lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring you up close here so that way we can begin. Okay, so here we are set up, and as you can see, let me actually bring the design. Now, just to, just to point out real quick before we continue, the 11 round liner, so it's gonna go for these lines right here, this line in here is gonna be the five round, and you can obviously see that this was done upon making the stencil. So when I was doing this, I made this line thicker on purpose, and then these lines, I made them softer like that because that's the way I wanted them to read within the designs as well. So you can kind of see, and all of that's subjective, that's just the only way that I'm looking at it. I don't want to, run the 11 round liner all the way around this way i mean it, it would still look nice don't get me wrong however i personally feel and this is just subjective if we take that extra mile to go ahead and switch out the needles to you know the appropriate or a more appropriate size to the actual stencil design at hand then it's going to make for a better read because when i put the stencil on I, I do my best to make sure that when the ink goes in and i wipe away that that's what's there so um with that being said you may want to put you know some thought into the design at hand and making sure along the way that you're putting you know um thought into what lines you want to be thicker or if you want thinner lines or if the same thing is the entire you know and this is just my approach some people may just have one solid line throughout the entire tattoo that's fine but that's just one thing that i want to point out to consider okay so let's begin here i'm going to put a little vaseline right here so i'm going to explain so you you will notice when i pull the line over this area we're going to cover that purple with black essentially it's kind of the idea behind it So as you see, we went over that and the line actually, to me, the configuration chosen matches up as you see right there. Let me go ahead and focus that back in. So as you see, the configuration chosen, it does fit and line up right and well, as opposed to, let's say a nine round liner, it would have been a bit more thinner. However, that's not to say that it wouldn't have worked. That's why I'm saying this is completely subjective. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and keep proceeding here. Let me see if I can zoom it in here. So for me, 
I'm very, very happy with these results right here. I'm, I'm liking the way that that's looking here. That's actually perfect. That's ideal to where I wanted it to be and line up. Same thing with this one right here. So the idea is to, I guess kind of just, me personally, what I did was over the years, I mean, not years, sorry, I haven't even been tattooing years, but over the time that I have been tattooing, um, just kind of getting used to the way that the needles look, like what they do upon putting them into skin. And on top of that, the way that we go about it. So notice right here, how I started right here and I can, I went this way and then I went that way. Now, if you notice over here, look how I uh, input the lines here. So as you see, I'm creating these natural curvatures. So when I go back in there with the fiber liner, it's going to flow within one another. It's going to start looking nice. And that's what I feel creates a really nice read within the tattoos. So let me proceed accordingly and try to kind of just to demonstrate my point. As you see, I'm right here, following the flow of it, but not going into the smaller lines just yet, as that's not the territory that I want to be in. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the leaf right here. So as you see, very nice, clean, solid, saturated lines is what we're getting. And this goes back to just, I made a video on pulling one pass lines. If you're curious about the gear that I'm using as well, I've also made in-depth reviews on pretty much everything that I'm using in this video as well. A little too much ink there, but we're all right. So let's go ahead and backtrack here. I'm gonna back up and I'm gonna show you how I would go about these wings and there's a specific way that I envision it here. That's how I'm gonna go about this and I'm gonna do the same thing right here. Very simple, but notice I'm not going into here just yet because that's going to be for a different configuration as we've mentioned earlier in the video here. So what I'm doing right now, and what I am thinking is, I'm trying to get all of these lines in here as smooth as possible. I'm running at 7.5 volts. I'm using the 3. Point, I believe 8 or 6 stroke on the P6. And it's performing just fine. So I will get to these right here with a different configuration. I'm gonna continue building up these wings right here. So I'm gonna start from right here. Taper that way into that small, into the small liner here that's gonna be the five round liner. So as you see, we're not crossing into that territory, but we're getting awfully close.
And to me, I feel like picking out the configurations and knowing what's what before the tattoo begins, like knowing, you know, how I call the wings out for the 11 round liner, I was pretty spot on. Like knowing what needles you want to use is going to help you as well along your way of tattooing. Because I know that I need to line all of these lines right here with the 11 round liner. So basically that's what I'm doing. I know that I need to line all of these with the seven round liner. So you can kind of see it sets the foundation. I'm not winging the tattoo. I know what I need to be doing. Someone didn't have enough ink. Then when I come close to the edge right there, I just taper out in and out. That's how I'm doing it. Nothing special. I made a video too on tapering in and out, but I haven't mentioned that. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just, as you see, lining these wings right here. Now, if we look close here on these wings that we just inputted with the ink, at the very tips right here, we have points that are ready to be tapered into with the five round liner. So when we change the needle configuration and go that extra mile to put that five round liner or put these lines in with the five round liner, it's going to show. Let me go ahead and zoom a little bit out and do these right here. So I felt that part in here also should have gone with the 11 round liner like so. Very nice and straightforward. And then I'm just gonna keep repeating this process, keep lining everything that I feel should be with an 11 round liner that I can line right here and right now. And off the bat, I do see a few spots that I definitely can line. Now, of course, with a real um, tattoo on real skin, on human skin, you would wanna kind of just work from the bottom up instead of kind of bouncing around like this. So for me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, gonna fill out this little part here and we're gonna backtrack back to the bottom there. Because if this was a real tattoo on human skin, I wouldn't have been this high just yet. However, since it is fake skin, It's a little bit different, but still, we should kind of stick to the same process that it would be on human skin. So let's wipe this away. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is we're going to backtrack. Now, we're going to backtrack over here start at the bottom and we're gonna work our way back up. We're gonna switch into the seven round liner. I went ahead and I was taking a close look here at these stems and if we zoom in up close, they're real, real tight together. So for something like this on skin, I have to consider that the ink is gonna bolt out a little bit. So I'm gonna take that standard size down to a double zero and I'm going to use a double zero seven round liner long taper by Big Wasp. And that's how I'm going to approach this specific area right here. I'm going to use a long taper as I want the lines to go in a little bit thinner, still with the seven configuration, but um, not heel as bold. So by sticking with the long taper, I'm able to do so. So I have the long taper, oh, forgive me. I have the long taper ready to go here. 
And we're just gonna align it as we normally would. Nothing changes, take our time. Be as consistent as possible, be patient. And we're still running at 7.5. So as you see, that line is matching up fairly well. So I'm going to just proceed and repeat this process as best as I can. So as you see though, that seven round liner long taper and the fact that I chose to go to the double zero was probably the right way to go here in this specific design. And I'm going to do the same line with this one right here, but this one's going to be with the three round liner, probably a standard three round liner for that one instead of double zero. So that's exactly how I'm going to approach it. Now, as you see, though, I'm only lining the parts that require the seven round liner lining, which are these right here, and that's it at the moment for this part of the tattoo. Because remember, we're going to work our way up as if we are working this on human skin. So at this moment, there's nothing else that I would need to line with the bug pin, seven round liner, long taper, everything looks good. So what I'm gonna switch to now is that standard three round liner. 
Actually, forgive me, we're gonna switch to the 005 round liner from Stigma, and then we're gonna go ahead and do these lines right here. This one, these two could even be done with a five round liner. So for me personally, I'm gonna pick this one to go with the five round liner. This one's gonna do the standard three round liner just because it just makes for more interest upon reading it. When people look at it, they're gonna see those little differences, I feel. They're not gonna notice it, but they will read it. So I have the five round liner and we are going to proceed and line here. Now when I line right here in these wings, it's going to be very straightforward. So I'm going to taper in from here and just like that. And as you see, it makes for a better read. Had that had been thicker, I don't think it would have looked as nice. And again, that is fully subjective. But to me, I kind of feel this demonstrates the importance of actually taking some time to pick appropriate needle configurations. So as you see though, how these lines right here with the smaller configuration are making for a nice read on this tattoo. So let's zoom in a little bit more up here. So as we see though, that looks nice. And then when we add some nice subtle stipple shading there, it all really starts coming alive. And we're gonna go ahead and do all of that in the video here. So very, very nice read. So if I'm locking in these thinner lines, I would have felt comfortable going that high because there's nothing else that I'm gonna lose in the stencil. So for that, it, that's the reason why I was able to go that high comfortably. So then I'm gonna do the same thing, kind of just build this right here. So now I'm just filling out these lines right here.
You can see though, when I started tapering in and out of the areas where the configurations meet, like this area right here, uh, these areas right here going into the wings, you can see though how it, that little choice to switch out the needle makes for a different read within the tattoo, like completely. And then the same thing over here. Let's come back over here. We're going to lock this in there as well. So very nice, like overall though, I hope that the point is getting across here that you see just switching the configurations out, taking the time to do that makes for a way better read on the tattoo here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and line this little area within the bird here with all of these little details. See, so we can see right here now that I can go back and switch to the 11 round liner. I have a couple of ways I can go about it. I can switch to the 11 round liner and continue building the tattoo, or I can go through the leaf first and then add these smaller lines as I feel those would be good with the five round liner as well. So let's just add the leaf details as well here while we're at it.
So that's how I'm gonna approach that. And then same thing on this leaf. While I'm here with the five brown liner rocking away, just gonna add the details real quick. And I'm making sure that I'm still tapering in and out like I normally would have, even if the outline of the leaf was already there, like so. So that way, when I do put the outline, it's gonna make for the exact same read. So for now, I feel that's good as I still have some lines to go through here with the 11 round liner. So I'm going to switch back to the 11 round liner. And we're going to continue lining the leaves and everything else that needs to be lined out with that configuration size. So you can start seeing that, yes, it is a bit more work up front. However, it does, I personally feel that it adds to the quality of work that we're doing here. Like it just adds something to it. Keep it going. So you can see the lines right here, how they look, they tapered in to one another smoothly on that leaf, even though I did the leaf details first. So if you're tapering in and out, it doesn't really matter. I feel you can kind of approach it how you see fit. So that right there for me is kind of like a new logic I feel is where I don't mind switching out the needles or doing this part first over this part if I'm still going to get to where I'm going. However, not all designs can work that way, so you kind of have to adjust accordingly, according to your design. So as you see, even that, everything on this one lined up very, very nice as well. And then over here in the bird, there was a piece that I had to do.
So you can see right here on this part, I'm not gonna go into this line as I feel that should be for three round liner. So I'm sticking to the guns here. I'm sticking to the thicker lines for the 11 round liner. Basically the configurations that I mapped out at the beginning of the tattoo, I'm sticking to them and I'm not really deviating from them. And then we'll be able to get a nice read on the overall tattoo when I'm done. That's clean, that's smooth, it's looking nice. Then I'm gonna go ahead and just proceed with the process. So everything's looking nice and clean and smooth here. I'm gonna go ahead and give this good wiping down. So I'm just gonna kind of continue still building up the tattoo right here and just accordingly as I see fit here. So right now I'm on the Stigma 5 round liner. So I'm just filling what I can with the five round liner before proceeding back to the 11 round liner here. So as you see, I'm just building up this tattoo, putting in the stencil exactly as I see it here. So shortly, we're gonna switch back to the 11 round liner and just kind of continue. So right here, I kind of feel that like I can do all of these with the five as well. And even the one down here, I can do that with the five, but I'm just gonna stick to my gun and I'm gonna kind of be selective. I'm gonna pick a couple of them to do with the five and I'm gonna pick a couple to do with the three. I'm gonna pull some of these in the five and in the three. I'm just gonna be selective, kind of just pick and choose as I see fit. There's no real like uh, specific reasoning behind, more so just spacing out the configurations accordingly, or more so as I see fit rather.
Now, if this was on human skin, it'd be a bit easier to wipe up and clean up. And I also feel this is on human skin. The approach I would have took would have been almost the same. Essentially, I would have still been putting in these smaller lines right here like so. Just because right now it makes more sense to me to do so. So I pretty much filled up all the spots right here that I can. I mean, I can continue and do all of this right here with, you know, the fiber liner. I can continue. However, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to actually switch out the needle right now. I'm going to go back to the 11 round liner so that way I can finish out these bolder areas that I need up here so that way I can put the frame on the tattoo. I'm just going to continue accordingly like so. So now we're going to run the 11 round liner. So I hope that by me illustrating here real time with you all why I'm very selective with the needle configurations that I choose to input the ink into the design. I hope you can see how it does begin to start adding up and it shows within your tattoo like the extra effort really shows. So right here you can kind of see it went above right there but i'm just going to meet that one with a smaller needle configuration and then just continue like so so you see what i'm doing is i'm sticking to the thicker lines right here
this video might go on a little bit longer because I'm demonstrating here real time with you all. But it seems like a lot of people do like real time and kind of like to just sit and watch the entire video. So that is what I'll do. I'll go ahead and make it into a time lapse as well. So basically my thought process right now, what I'm doing is I'm just trying to get these main saturate, I mean the larger areas in place. So that way I can go back in and kind of just fill in the blanks or, you know, connect the dots rather with the smaller needle configurations. So when I'm putting the Vaseline on, again, I'm putting a small thin layer and I'm real mindful of how I wipe. It may look like I'm wiping down very hard, but I'm actually not. I'm wiping down very, very soft and that sure enough is very effective at removing large amounts of the excess ink there. So that's pretty much it. I think I'm done with the 11 round liners as of right now. I don't think that I would, or the 11 round liner, I don't think that there's anything else 
needed for the 11. I think I got everything. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get that five and I'm going to fill in the most crucial spot right now that's loose, which is this part of the rose. So I'm gonna get the Stigma 5 round liner and we're gonna go ahead and fill in the rose there. Now for the inside of this rose, again, I'm going to be using the Stigma 005 round liner there. And these are just small clothes, soft wipes, and I'm gonna be filling in all of that as well. But right now I wanna focus on, actually I'll focus on everything, but kind of get my drift here. So for this, there's not really much that I would say, more so just show you all me doing this real time here.
so that's looking great right there. <clears throat> I'm just gonna, again, just keep going with it, keep building. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Thank you. 
<clears throat> okay, so now I'm just going to switch over to the three round liner and I'm going to, or actually I'm going to switch to the seven round liner long taper real quick, just because it's a small part. And then we're going to fill that small part out right here, this area. So I think that's it also for the seven round liner long taper. Now the last one is going to be the three round liner. I'm gonna use a standard three round liner by CNC. I'm gonna be using a police three round liner. <clears throat> now I'm gonna take the three round liner down to about 6.8 volts. I don't want too much voltage with this needle here. I'm gonna start at the bottom where I need to go back over here and So I really love the way that this tattoo is coming out. I feel like it's coming out great.
so that is it if i am correct for the lining part of this tattoo so for the shading i figured that i'm going to save that for the time lapse video i'm going to make a time lapse video of this tattoo as well and i'll go ahead and incorporate the shading into that video as for this specific video i was more so trying to shed some light on the importance of picking correct needle configurations for your specific tattoo at hand now for the shading though what i will say is that i'm going to use the same three round liner that i went ahead and used for all of the other little fancy stuff out here i'm going to use that for the shading i'm just going to stipple some subtle stipples here throughout this entire tattoo i figured though this video kind of ran on long enough so let's go back over to a top view so we can get a good look at what this tattoo looks like overall okay so here we are at the top view and allow me to bring the tattoo up close here so that way we can get a good look at everything here i'm just gonna go ahead and give you all a rundown and as you can see though like in this area right here you can really see how using different configurations and switching on the fly during the tattoo really makes all of the difference in the read of the tattoo so i wanted to show you the tattoo the completed outline up close here now I will not be shading it on video as it's going to take another 45 to an hour and I don't want this to be a two hour video. However, not to mention that the shading, I'm gonna be using the same needle that I used to go ahead and complete some of these, which is the CNC Poly Standard 3 Round Liner. So that's why I don't feel the need to go ahead and hold the video up for another hour for the shading. I wanted to go ahead and demonstrate and illustrate the point that when we go the extra mile, take a little bit more time to kind of practically think about the needles that we're going to use for the design at hand. As you can see, it makes for a much better read within the tattoo. And again, this is just in my opinion. I would prefer to go ahead and go the extra mile to pick a few more needles that would make for a better read, as you can see within this tattoo over going for let's say one needle that's kind of in the middle between all these like maybe a nine round liner and lining the whole thing with a nine round liner what i'm saying is those choices that we choose to make are going to show within the tattoo and as you can see though overall this tattoo reads beautifully i do love the way this tattoo came out i'm very happy with the results of this specific tattoo right here now be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. I'm gonna go ahead and release a time-lapse video of this tattoo along with the entire shading so that way you can see the final product in its entirety. Now with that being said, I do hope that I touch base and kind of shed light on the point that I'm trying to make, which is the importance, again, of picking correct needle configurations for the designs at hand and also knowing which designs we can and can't do. We'll go ahead and get more into that in another video. Now, if I also didn't touch base on anything specific that you may have wanted to know or if you saw something along the way at some point throughout this video that you may have wanted to know, please feel free to drop a comment below and I'm going to do my absolute best to assist you in the best possible direction. I do have social medias all under the same name at Daniel Yuck. I have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok all under the same name at Daniel Yuck. That's going to be D-A-N-I-E-L-Y-U-C-K. I would genuinely appreciate the support on there. Not to mention, um, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell for me. Yet again, I genuinely appreciate your time. Y'all have a great day.